Hi everyone. I hope you have been watching the series of videos I have been making on different research designs. In that regard, today's video is the sixth video in the series, which takes up a post-test only control group design. This is a type of true experimental designs. As I mentioned before, experimental designs are classified under four categories, pre-experimental, true experimental, quasi-experimental, ex post facto design and factorial designs. The links to all the previous videos are in the description section below. But today, before I discuss post-test only control group design, I must discuss the other two types of true experimental design just to provide a comparison with what we are going to be learning today. So in one of my videos, I talked about the pre-test post-test control group design. And this is what you see on your screen, where there are two groups of people who are randomly assigned to either an experimental group or control group. The experimental group is observed, subjected to the experimental treatment and observed again. And the control group is isolated from any influences of the experimental treatment. It is simply observed both at the beginning and at the end of the experiment. So an example I took was a group of Indians living in Australia were found to have low vitamin D levels. They were randomly assigned to either of the two groups in one group. And both the groups were then observed for the vitamin D levels. And then in one group, they were given the vitamin D pills for let's say three to six months. And the other group was not given the vitamin D pills. We are assuming here that both groups were then kept under similar conditions of diet and exposure to sunlight, which may also increase the vitamin D level in human body. And then after the treatment is given, both the groups were then observed to be studied to see the effect of the vitamin D pill on the human body and whether it increased or decreased the vitamin D levels to study the cause and effect relationship. This group, this type of design was then expanded further by Solomon in 1949. And he proposed what is called the Solomon four group design in which two additional groups were added to the pre-test post-test control group design. Of course, it demanded more of researchers time and energy. But what was the advantage was that if the researcher finds in the final observation that groups three and four differ in much the same way that groups one and two do, then the researcher will be able to generalize his or her findings to situations in which no pretest has been given. Basically, this design enhanced the external validity of the study. In today's video, we are going to study about post-test only control group design because some life situations will defy pre-testing. You can't pre-test the forces in a thunderstorm or a hurricane, nor can you pre-test growing crops. Additionally, sometimes you may be unable to locate a suitable pre-test or just noted the very act of pre-testing can influence the results of the experimental manipulation. In such circumstances, the post-test only control group design offers a possible solution. The design may be thought of as the last two groups of the Solomon four group design. The paradigm for the post test only approach is what you see on the screen. Here again, you have two groups and random assignment of two groups is critical in the post test only design. Without it, the researcher has nothing more than a static group comparison, something that we discussed previously and you can find the link below. Now here, two groups in which people are randomly assigned are selected. In one group, the treatment is administered and then the effect of the treatment is observed. And in the other group, no treatment is administered and they are observed. So there is no pre-testing here. They are not observed before the treatment. They are only observed. One group is observed only after the treatment and the other group is observed straight away. No treatment is administered. So there is no pre-testing. So if you can see, this, this uh, design is quite similar to the last two groups of the Solomon four group design. And that's why I discussed those two designs as well, just to show you. But the advantage is pretty much the same. However, this one, you have the post-test only control group design. So there is no pre-testing available because sometimes you will not be able to conduct a pre-testing. You will only be able to administer a treatment and then 
observe the effect of the treatment like the examples i told you you cannot pre test growing crops all right so if you want to test out a uh, you know impact of new fertilizers you don't want to pre test without the impact of so you can you can you don't want to pre test and waste your time because it takes time all right so the researcher doesn't have time so what you can do is either in one you give the fertilizer and in the other group you don't give the fertilizer and then with time you see the effect on the growth of crops you don't want to conduct an experiment where both the crops are not given the treatment and see you don't have the luxury of time there or you or that is not possible so that is where this design will be very useful so thank you for watching today's video and if you have any kind of questions please let me know i'll be happy to answer it put it in the comment section and i will see you soon with my next video bye for now